All right guys, after all of the base colors are laid down, I've gone ahead and assembled some sections so you can get an idea of that and really liking how this is turning out so far. The colors are looking really nice. So let's give you a look at a couple sections here. Like there's the torso, we got the shield here as well. The yellow, I was worried when I was spraying it that it was not quite bright enough, but definitely when you set it against the, the lavender there, it's looking very nice. And the lavender also is much lighter, I think even lighter than I expected, but it's look it's okay, I think it looks good. It's definitely a little bit lighter than I think what is on the actual Master Grade kit, but that's okay. I was basically using the Master Grade, as I said, as a reference for like basically color placement and just kind of the general idea of uh, where uh, the colors should be, but I wasn't too worried about matching it every exactly everywhere. So uh, the other thing I will point out is for the eyes, I didn't mention this yet, but for the eye part, as you can see, I've gone ahead and painted that gold because it looks like on the Master Grade kit, again, the yellow, the eyes are kind of like a clear yellow kind of color. And so I thought this gold would look quite nice. And then once I fill in the black around the eyes because once again the eyes on this kit are an actual are a recessed detail instead of a raised detail so it makes it a little bit not harder but a little bit different from your normal kit for how I would normally paint eyes on an HG. Uh, so normally at this step what I would do is just to uh, make some uh, assembly like this as far as putting some pieces together and then I would go and do the top coat over it so then I can move on into detail painting and panel lines and things like that but what I want to do in this case uh, a little bit different actually than what I normally do is go in and do some of the kind of not exactly detail painting but kind of like filling in painting uh, which what I mean by that is like for here like the back side of the skirts especially for an HG like this, like for the back inside of the skirt. So I would just paint this all in, in dark gray or like, for example, the part for the ankle guard there, I would just like paint the back of this dark gray. So it just help, helps to add like that dark backing. So it looks like the front of the part is painted and then the back the part would probably would not necessarily be painted realistically. So just something dark to kind of match the frame. In this case, I'm going to be using just a German gray, which is a typical paint color that I'll typically use for this. Uh, no, it doesn't exactly match this. It's not quite as dark as the color that I use for like the frame joint parts for this actually but it's okay if it doesn't match exactly it can have a two-tone look I'm fine with that this is basically the detail painting that is not necessarily to bring out detail but it's just to add for the stuff that's kind of like in the background of the parts the things that you're not really paying attention to as far as detail but without it it kind of looks I don't know it doesn't look weird but it definitely looks better if you go ahead and, and fill in some of these spaces so I also did do a little bit of masking on a couple of parts just for like here to mask around the elbow joint because I wanted that to be in the kind of frame color but as you saw before it's molded together with the form so I had to mask that but I did mess up a little bit I guess some paint came out through my masking tape there so you can see a little bit of overspray there on the form so I do have a little bit of touching up to do on the parts that I masked I also masked uh, the little vent there on the side of the shoulder part those came out fine didn't have any problems with those and then masked this part here that center part of the joint there for the legs uh, is molded together with this thigh part so I had to mask that off to make that gray. But I'm noticing that I should have made this part also gray. There's like one, two, three kind of parts of that joint there. And just the center one in dark gray doesn't look quite right for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint this one here on the side as well. But I think I'll probably do that uh, a little bit later. So I can take this part here like for the back of the ankle. And it's the kind of uh, parts where I don't, I really don't need to bother with thinning the paint. And I don't need to worry about being like, super crazy precise about it. I mean, I'll pay attention to what I'm doing, but uh, this stage is kind of pretty easier. Basically, you just need to fill in these parts because again, it's just going to be like in the background. So if you're looking at the kit from the front, this, this kind of this kind of stuff, you're just not really going to see. But if you're looking at it from some different angles or something, then you might catch like a glimpse up behind one of the armor parts or something like that. And you want it to look like uh, like you've covered all your bases. If you if you're seeing, you'll see this a lot. If you look at kits online, even by you know uh, really good modelers, we all miss. I mean, I do this sometimes a lot too. We'll just miss something where you see it behind one of the parts, and you can tell that that it just doesn't look quite right. Because if you're imagining this to be like an actual giant robot, then you think like this kind of detail here, this part which is holding on this ankle armor on the front wouldn't be painted probably in the same color as the armor. It's sort of like a mechanical part of the kit or like a background uh, behind the, one of the armor pieces, something like that. Then it makes more sense to be in kind of the same color as the frame. So for example, now you can see that part on the front painted and unpainted, which one is gonna look better. Now it is gonna be covered up, of course, by 
the part here on the front. So once again, just uh, painted and unpainted. Let's have a look here. Again, from the front, you're not really gonna notice, but if you look closely, you can see it looks much better on this one where the ankle armor, first of all, that connection is much less visible being a dark color to kind of match the frame part in behind there. Whereas this one, it really pops out and it looks just kind of not quite as good. So it definitely takes, it definitely pays to take the time to paint in little details like that. Again, just sort of the background parts that just really help the overall look of the kit. All right, so now I'm just kind of moving ahead with some of the basic steps. I went ahead and did panel lining in that, nothing really special, just did some black panel lining, and so that helped to just bring out some of the little details. Although this kit doesn't really have a whole lot of panel lining to do on it, there's just a little bit here and there. And now I'm just going in and working on some of the detail painting, some of which I was doing in German gray, some of which I'm doing here in titanium silver, some of which I'm doing here in dark gray. So, so for example, here in the backpack, you can see I just painted in these little areas here in the titanium and inside the thruster belts there just to but once again, just bring out some of the little little bits of detail and everything around on this kit. Uh, when putting the two halves, of, like the two main parts of the shield together, uh, the yellow part, when it pushed up through the opening here on the top part, which was originally red, which is now purple, uh, that caused like some of the paint along the inside edge of that to kind of push up. So I got like some of the paint around the inside edge, like along the side of that cross part. Uh, some of the purple paint was chipped up around the edges there, so had to kind of take this apart, sand that down, and repaint this front part, and once again with another coat of purple just to cover that back up again, and it's okay now. Uh, so I had to fix that, unfortunately. That's annoying, but see in the back, go ahead and put the pieces in the back there and do the panel lining. And so we're basically just finishing up a little bit of the detail painting here, and then we're, we're ready to go in and add some decals on this. So just a few more bits to paint now. All right, so then our last step, once all the little detail painting is done, is then just water slide before we get to our final top coat then, of course. So, uh, I'm thinking, after going through all my water slides and everything, I found on here, on this water slide set from Bandai for the Gym Sniper 2 and the Gym Command Master Grade kits, down here, it's got the EFSF logo in the same font, which will match the logo that comes with the Master Grade 2.0 kit. So that's cool, and that looks like it should just barely fit on the shoulder. It's gonna be a little bit tight, but I think that should just barely fit. So there's our EFSF logo. And then over on this sheet here, this is just a generic sheet, alphabet gray here from HIQ. You'll see we've got G3 right there. It's, so I think like some of these are definitely done I think probably with some different Gundam things in mind, like you can see here, you got the TriStars logo there, you got the TR logo here that obviously you could use for some like Advanced Zeta kids, you got the FA for Full Armor, you've got the Gym here, you even got the WB for White Base. So some of these I'm pretty sure are laid out with the Gundam in mind for some of these. And you just have like generic alphabet here so you can make your own, but anyway, we've already got G3 here in a couple different sizes, so I'll be able to use that for the G3 logo. And then for all, everything else, I'm just gonna use this set here, it's just generic 144 scale markings, uh, gray and orange. So the markings are going to be just gray, 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 and then with little bits of orange in there as well. Just for little bits of color, I think will look really nice on there. Cause as it is, you know, it's all just, uh, all mostly pretty just cold with gray. And then with even the purple in there, a little bit of that, but so I think these should work just fine. Let's go ahead and get our main markings laid down first. I usually like to put down like the, the main big logos first and then move on to just all the little markings and everything else. Also got the white version of the decal and the EFSF kind of uh, cross logo there that I'm going to put on to the front of the shield here as well, also just from the same decal set. Now, unfortunately, I went for the kind of medium sized font and I thought it would fit, but it doesn't quite fit. So instead of trying to force that, that means I've wasted a decal. So for the moment, there you can see there are the main markings down on the shoulders and everything else I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in. As for the top of the head, what I plan to do for that is to use a little bit of this here. This is the mirror seal, uh, it's just like it's Aurora film. What I'll do is I'll use the sticker sheet from the actual kit and just lay that on here for like a template. Just cut a little strip 
a little strip of this and then lay that on the top of the head and that should work uh, but I can't try that until everything's done because I don't want to spray top coat on top of this so it's kind of like the very last thing to do after the final top coat's on so uh, I'll finish up the decals get this coat of top coat and then you guys will the next time you see this you'll see the finished product so that is going to be it for all the work in progress on this. It was not like a ton of work really on it, but a few little minor things and little fixes here and there. And I think it's going to come out looking pretty good in the end. So we're almost done. I'll see you guys in the final product uh, video very soon. Bye guys.